This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Efren Manzo takes strike one from Jansen Kiesel to lead off the fourth inning. Discount Tire presents On the Rubber. A look at both teams' pitching numbers. We'll give you numbers through three innings after this 0-1 delivery from Kiesel to Manzo. It's outside for ball one. Santa Clara pitching through three complete. Four hits, one run. It was earned. No bases on balls, three strikeouts, no wild pitches, no hit batsmen for BYU. Jansel Kiesel going all the way. Five hits, two runs, both earned. No bases on balls, one strikeout. As he gets ahead of Manzo, one ball and two strikes now. Discount Tire, let's get you taken care of. Discount Tire gives you the the on-the-rubber report throughout BYU baseball games. Greg Grubel, Tuckett Slade with you here at Miller Park. BYU trailing 2-1, getting one back in the third. Kiesel sees it foul back out of play by Manzo. Manzo with a solo home run to lead off the second. First run of the game for the Broncos. They added a second in the second inning. They have the 2-1 lead. Jansen Kiesel just threw his 60th pitch. And that skips outside for ball two. Two and two to Efren Manzo. Manzo now hitting 304 on the year. Not a ton of at bats. This is 47th of the season. That's good contact to left field. Get there, Das. Oh, off the top, off of, the the wall top of the and wall. Over for his second solo home run of the day. Wow. At the top of the 12 foot wall and left, it hit the yellow line and went over. Sometimes you're just having one of those days where whether it's a fastball or a slider, you're on time and you don't miss, and that ball was hit well. He just hung it over the middle. A second solo home run and as many at-bats for the DH, Efren Manzo. And he has put the H in DH today for Santa Clara. A 3-1 lead for the Broncos, a called strike to Michael Diaz. Dawson Hall went back to the wall and watched that bounce off the top of the padding and over. Grounded to Ozzie Pratt, scoops it up and fires to Wilk at first, and that's the first out of the fourth inning for BYU. Santa Clara three and BYU one. Broncos three runs on six hits. BYU one run on four hits. The two biggest hits, a pair of solo shots from Efren Manzo. He's now six for eight in the series with three RBI. Michael Diaz just grounded out. Brings Malcolm Williams to the plate. To the plate. So Diaz retired on the 4-3. Williams now hits. He uh, laid down a sacrifice bunt in the second. Yeah, not a ton of that official at-bats on the season for him. He's getting his third start of the year. Didn't play in the first two games of this series. Malcolm Williams, he'll square, and that'll be inside. Did it clip the bat? Must have, right? Or did uh, it skip no, off the it catcher's just like glove? It hit the catcher's glove, yeah. Okay, so two balls and a strike. Looked to be around the fists on him, but it caught the leather and not the bat. So two balls and a strike, one out, no one on for Malcolm Williams. Squares and fouls that off home plate. Maybe the foot of Colin Reuter as well. Yeah, he's limping around a little bit. So two balls, two strikes now. We talked last night, Tuck, at the broadcast about how few home runs BYU's allowed. Uh, Ten, I think, two yeah. last night. And two here in this game by the same guy, Efren Manzo. Well, fortunately, they're solo home runs, so it doesn't extend a lead really large. And that's a punch out. That's a called strike. That's a backwards K for Jansen Kiesel. Putting the K in Kiesel for out number two. 3 1 the lead. Santa Clara were in the top of the fourth. <laughs> called strike on Cal Christofri, the Santa Clara pitcher.
the 0-1. Outside edge, strike two, gets the call. You mentioned uh, the solo home runs that Manzo's hit. BYU four solo shots in the Dixie game on Tuesday to begin the week when there were all kinds of hits and extra base hits, but didn't equate to a win on that night. A tough luck night. That's lifted in the air to right field. Sapiti ranging over to his left and makes the catch about 10 feet inside. The right field line, that'll do it. Santa Clara adds to its lead, though, with a solo home run to lead off the fourth inning. It's a pair of inning-eating, uh, inning-leading home runs for Manzo in the second and the fourth. For Santa Clara in the fourth, one run on one hit. There were no errors, no one left on. We go bottom four, Santa Clara three, BYU one on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Brian Sapiti bats first for BYU in the bottom of the fourth. Cooks down 3-1 to Santa Clara. And strike one piped in from Jared Ficus. Ficus has gone all the way, starter for the Broncos. Just through his 45th pitch. Pretty economical into his fourth inning of work. Sapiti 0 for 1, flied out to center in the second. And he fouls that out of play to go down 0-2 to Ficus. Got a couple of guys down in the bullpen now. Just getting loose, getting the body going. So both bullpens now officially active on this sunshiny but cool Saturday. Wind blowing out to center, right center. Both home runs to left in this game from Efren Manzo. That's high for ball one to Sapiti. Shout out the base coaches for BYU. Trent Pratt, number 15 at third. And Brent Herring, number 33 at first base. The kick and fire, and that's hitting the air to right field. Right fielder going back, just shy of the track. And Diaz watches it into his glove. That's out number one for BYU in the bottom of the fourth. So Sapiti with a fly out to center and a fly out to right in his first two at-bats today. He's now two for 11 for the series. Austin Deming, three for seven for the series. A single in the second, a one-out single. He was stranded. He has hits in seven of his last ten games now. BYU's third baseman, Austin Deming, hits with one out, no one on. And that's hit sharply to center field, and that will be a single off one hop to the center fielder. So Austin Deming, two for two on the day, a couple of singles. Yeah, again, another one-out single, though. Yep. He followed the Sapiti fly out with a single in the second and follows the Sapiti fly out with a single in the fourth. Deming now four for eight in the series. And BYU's collective hitting as a team has really come up in the last couple weeks. Empty count, one out, one on for Josh Cowden. Popped up to short in the second. Josh now one for his last 16 at the plate. He's looking to heat up. He's getting his first start, his first WCC start in exactly two weeks. He got a start in the March 26th series finale here at home against Gonzaga. He's the DH today, the 0-1 to Cowden with Deming on first. He goes opposite field but fouls it on a play down the third baseline. No balls and two strikes, so Cowden has some work to do. BYU in the black jerseys, white pants. The black and royal caps. The black cap with the royal bill. The sailor coog on the cap. The sailor coog on the chest. And horizontal white stripes on the black stirrup socks. The 0-2. That's a take. Good take. And a good take because it's ball one. One ball, two strikes to count. And one out, one on for BYU. We're in the bottom of the fourth. And the Broncos lead 3-1. Two solo home runs from Efren Manzo and an RBI double from Alex Lambeau for the three Bronco runs. Mitch McIntyre doubled home Ozzy Pratt for the Cougars' lone run in the third. The 1-2 to Cowden. That's another good take, ball two. Yeah, to take back-to-back changeups down, that's where Cowden has struggled with a lot of his strikeouts as he's swinging at uh, balls out of the zone. So that's a good take to get back in this count. From 0-2 to 2-2. Two and two. Ficus into the low 50s in pitch count. On deck is Colin Reuter, the left-handed bat of Josh Cowden. 
facing the righty hurler Ficus. And that's three straight balls from Ficus. Well, all the way back in the bat, uh, in the count here. Now it's a great time to win this. Josh needs to win this battle for confidence, right? He's just been scuffling a little bit, but so much potential to help us. Full count, one out, one on. BYU down two in the bottom of the fourth. The check back at first. The diving back head first is Austin Deming. The entire playing surface here in Provo is artificial. Dirt colored turf. And the green alternating tone striped field with the huge spread oval Y in center. The 3 2. And that's a reach out number into fair territory, but off the foot of Cowden, I think. Foul. Yeah. Yep, Josh is going to take a knee as he took that one off the foot. Well, he swung at ball four, was, that change up down. Or was it off his knee? Yeah, off his and knee. Yeah, bounced up off the ground, off his right knee. And so, Josh looking to walk this one off. BYU trainer Judd Franson is going to check on out. And, and Cal will give him the thumbs up. Yeah. Or at least, okay. Yeah, yeah either way, Josh is, is being politely asked to chill out. Cowden says, I'm okay. So Judd Franson back to the dugout. And Josh will dig back in here in this full count. Rests the bat on his left shoulder and awaits the 3-2 offering from Ficus. Oh, and he Get rips wings. that to right. Get wings. Josh drives it to right and into the pines. It's a game time two run home run for Josh Cowden. And that right there is what he can bring to this program. That's a big time hit. 107 mile an hour off the bat, 433 feet. That ball was crushed. It's a Zions Bank home run. For banking that helps you game plan for life, Zions Bank is for you. Josh Cowden took that full count pitch from Ficus and planted it. What do we got going over here? Over the wall in right field. What do we and got now here? The umpires are, I think, telling the BYU baseball dugout to make it back in the dugout. Too many guys left the dugout. Might have been a celebration issue. The umpires were very energized well, he, as they it looked gestured like he, toward the BYU bench. Yeah, he ran in there and looked like he was, he said, you got to go. I don't know who he's talking to. Huh. Whatever BYU was doing, it was celebratory, right? Yeah, exactly. Unless somebody comes out of the dugout and possibly is talking. Or taunting. You know, taunting to their dugout or to the players. I don't know what had happened. And they're obviously talking about it. Yeah, Coach Mike Littlewood is chatting with two yeah. of the umpires. Yeah, and you have Coach Pratt and Coach Bradshaw talking to the dugout, calming them down. So something in the celebration caught the attention of the umpires, and they gestured pretty emphatically to the BYU dugout. And, and they're actually looking down the roster right now and maybe to warn an individual on the roster. The umpire's got his... I think that's what he's doing is checking the BYU roster right now. And so maybe they're going to ID somebody for extra attention. Either way, play will resume in a 3-3 ball game. Josh Cowden with a two-run home run to right. And he busts out of that one for 16 slump in style. And that was just crushed to right field. 3-3 our score. So third home run of the day. Two for Santa Clara, first for BYU. And with one out, Colin Reuter will hit. Josh Cowden making his first start in two weeks and making it count. The 1-0. First WCC start because yeah. he did start the Dixie State game in left field on, on Tuesday. Yeah, so it looks like I just found out that Aiden Callahan had gotten thrown out of the game for a demonstrative act towards the other team that the umpire had saw after the celebration. Celebratory. <laughs> So Aiden is is recovering yeah. right now from injuries. Not part of the 27-man roster for the weekend. 
and apparently came out of the dugout and, as we call it, taunting? Yeah, taunting. Has well, been ejected. He wasn't on the active roster, yeah, so it doesn't really hurt. Yeah, there's not much of an impact there. That's laced to left, but will be caught on the fly by John John Baring. It'll be two gone here in the bottom of the fourth. So after all that, resetting things with a two-out flyout by Colin Reuter. And in a tie ball game, Dawson Hall will hit. Josh Cowden to right field, a two-run home run. Josh's first home run of the year. Great time to do it. RBIs three and four. Doubles his RBI total to Cowden. An empty count, two out, no one on for Dawson Hall. And he lifts that in the air. Down the left field line, left fielder Baring watches it into his glove. A long fly out to left, and that'll do it. But for BYU in the bottom of the fourth, two runs on two hits. The big hit or two-run home run for Josh Cowden. There were no errors, and no one left on. We go to the top of the fifth tie ball game. Broncos and Cougars, three all on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU's 27th home run of the year comes off the bat of Josh Cowden. Ties the game at three. We have a PZ Printing pitching change for BYU. Brought to you by PZ Printing. Nothing inspires like print. It'll be the southpaw, Cy Nielsen, taking the hill for BYU. So Cy replacing Jansen Kiesel. Kiesel went four complete. Gave up six hits and three runs. Cy making his 14th appearance. Gets a lot of work for BYU. He's pitched 13 in the third innings. Has given up 11 hits, nine runs, eight earned. He has struck out 14 to just two walks. A 7-1 to one strikeout to walk ratio. Very impressive. A 5.40 ERA on the year for Cy. And the first batter Cy will face is the nine hitter, Alex Lambeau, the shortstop. RBI double for Lambeau in the second. First pitch from Cy, just missing for ball one. Well, you get all the momentum back with the big two-run home run, which is fantastic. Now you need Cy to put up a shutdown inning right here and keep that momentum. 1-0 to Lambeau. strike from Michael Goble. Lambo's RBI double in the second made the score 2-0 and Efren Manzo home run made it 3-0 in the top of the or 3-1 in the top of the fourth and BYU answer with two in the bottom of the frame tying the game at three as Lambo fouls it back out of play. One ball, two strikes now to Alex Lambo. Cougars got their first run in the third. The Mitch McIntyre RBI double. And then the Josh Cowden two-run blast tying the game. Slow grounder to third. Charging hard. Deming fired a Wilk and he's safe. Taken off the bag and it would have been close anyway. Yeah. The old swing and bunt right there is what you call that. Great so, located pitch right there by Sai. He jams him. Ah, tough break there. It'll be an infield single for Lambeau. Came in two today, 0 for 6 on the series, but 2 for 2 on the day with an RBI. So he's at first, no one out, and the lead runner reaches. And that's the fourth consecutive inning with a hit for the leadoff batter for the Broncos. A square from the lead off, the number one hitter. Top of the order, John John Baring. No one out, one on, and a tie ball game 3-3. Baring flight out to center in the first, grounded out 5-3 in the second. He's the only lefty bat in Coach Rusty Filter's lineup. On deck is Coleman Brigman. Square, the bunt laid down, handled barehanded, and the fire to second. They get the lead runner. Great play by Colin Reuter. He barehands the bunt and fires to Watkins at second. And the Cougs get the lead runner. And so a fielder's choice reach by bearing on the bunt. But thrown out at second is Lambeau. On the 2-6. So fielder's choice reach for bearing And one gone here in the top of the fifth. Well played by Reuter. 
And there wouldn't have been time to do anything but barehanded. Great play. Sai will now check bearing at first. So Lambeau erased on the base paths. That's a risk-reward play there by Colin Reuter. Through to Brock Watkins covering second and got Lambeau. One gone, one on, top five. Game tied at three. Liner to Deming, the double off. Go ahead. Oh, he dropped it. He's dropped it first. He went through his glove. It actually, I think his glove broke. Did it go through the webbing at first base? Uh, uh, Wilkes looking at his glove right now. I, I don't know. Guess how. not. So Deming catches the line drive at third for the second out. Fires to first. And they got there in time. But somehow it squeaked through the glove of Jacob Wilk. Oh, oh it, no, did, it, yeah. it didn't. It didn't yeah. hit the player. He just it, missed it. it yeah. He just missed his glove. Huh. Unfortunately, it actually hit the player and didn't go into right yeah. field. Bearing's like, thanks a lot at first base. He gets drilled by the throw from Deming. So Jacob never quite got it on the stab as it hit the player, but it's now two out. The catch of that hot shot to the hot corner by Deming. They tried to double off Bearing at first, and Wilk just missed the throw, and it hit Bearing as he was diving back to first. And it would have been on time, I think, for the double off had Wilk been able to snag it. So two out now. And a check swing strike. No balls and a strike to John Hanley as Coleman Brigman lined out to Deming at third a moment ago. John Hanley, the first baseman, hits. No balls, a strike, two out, one on. And now it's 0-2 as Hanley swings and misses. Hanley singled in the first and was stranded. A 6-4-3 double play in the third. And that's BYU's 28th double play of the season. To 26 turned against the 0-2. And that's a swinging strikeout from Cy Nielsen through the bat of John Hanley. And that'll do it for Santa Clara in the top of the fifth. We're halfway home here at Miller Park. 3-3 their score. In the top of the fifth, no runs on a hit, no errors, and a runner was left on. 3-3 to the bottom of the fifth. We go on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Top of the order for BYU here in the bottom of the fifth. BYU 3, Santa Clara 3. Cougs will come back from down 3-1 to tie it. Jared Ficus faces Brock Watkins. That's going to be gapped in left center. That'll be a double for Brock. A stand-up double to start the bottom of the fifth for BYU. Brock Watkins extends his hit streak to 13 games and his on-base streak to 18 with a single to left center. So Brock wide double to left center, beg your pardon. Stand-up double for Brock. Brock is on second base for Ozzie Pratt. And Pratt is on a two-for-two day and a six-for-10 series. Singled in the first. He singled and scored BYU's first run in the third. And Ozzie hits with a runner in scoring position. Ozzie hitting 333 on the year with runners in scoring position. BYU looking to go ahead. They've got a runner in scoring position and no one out to lead off the bottom of the fifth. Watkins at second. Pratt in the box. And it'll be ball one delivered by Ficus. Well, Greg, normally this would be a bunt situation for Ozzy, But he's so hot. What, six for ten on the weekend? Yeah. I mean, how do you... It's hard to say I'm going to bunt him when he's seeing the ball so well. Brock takes his lead at second. Ficus glancing back at Brock once and twice. The kick, the fire, and outside Ooh. edge. Yep, called strike. One ball, one strike. Because the one thing Ozzy does well, even when he gets out, is he hits ground balls to the right side, first or second, which if you do that right here, it advances Brock anyways. The 1-1. One, one. A check swing. The appeal to third, no. Ball two, held back. And if they can get Brock to third, the Cougs have that excellent number with RBIs per opportunity with runners on third less than two out. The number is 606 on the season. Two balls and a strike to Pratt. Two for two today. 
Six hits in the series. Pike has come set, and that's well outside. For ball three, three and one to Ozzie. Well, great time to hit here if you're Ozzie. Be patient. But if you get yours, put a great swing on it. Cougars a 261 team with runners in scoring position. Very close to their season average on the year. Foul to the screen, full count. Three balls, two strikes to Pratt. BYU starting second baseman. Now on a six game hit streak. 3 1 count, and you go back door slider. That just means you know you don't think you can beat him with your fastball here. Hmm. Ficus leans in, gets the sign. Comes set and delivers. And that is a walk for Ozzie Pratt. That's high and outside. Ball four. The Ficus was looking at the umpire like he thought he had it, but the track man saying that ball was uh, two or three baseball lengths in the other batter's box. So now this changes things because normally Mitch would be your RBI guy, but first and second, nobody out. It's, it's you know, 70% of the time you bunt here. And so it's hard to tell. In a tie what, ball game. Yeah, what coach will do. Now next, you, next run so important. In your back of your mind, you have to realize that Wilkes also struggled getting RBIs in those chances too. So your play's in your mind a little bit. Rusty Filter will conference on the mound with Jared Ficus. The walk to Pratt, by the way, the first free pass issued today by Santa Clara pitching. This comes with no one out, bottom of the fifth inning in a 3-3 ball game. And both teams' outputs identical. Three runs, seven hits, no errors for both BYU and Santa Clara. And that's it for Jared Ficus. It'll be a pitching change, so we'll take a 60-second break. New Santa Clara pitcher next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, we're back at Miller Park, and a new pitcher for Santa Clara is Skylar Hales. Well, we thought Skyler might start one of the games this weekend because he has throughout the year. The six foot four, 220 pound sophomore Hales replacing Jared Ficus here in the bottom of the fifth. So Ficus officially went four complete. We're in the fifth, but he's not recorded an out here in the fifth inning. So Hales enters the game and makes his ninth appearance. His last two appearances were starts. He has six starts on the year, 34 and two-thirds innings pitched. 48 strikeouts, but he also walks a lot of guys, 15 so far. 35 hits, 21 runs. Only a third of, or two-thirds of those runs have been earned runs, however. His record's two and two. He's got a 3.63 ERA. <laughs> Faces Mitch McIntyre with first and second and no one out. He'll step off second. Well, that was the also it shows now that Mitch was showing to bunt. So now it helps them call their defense. And of course, coach calls the bunt off and lets him take that ball one. There's such a chess match between coaches in these situations, Greg. So McIntyre now awaits the 1-0 with first and second. And that's a number to second to second base for one. No throw to first. They'll go to third, but holding there is Watkins. So Pratt is retired on the 4-6 ground out and reaching on the 4-6 fielder's choice is Mitch McIntyre. So with first and second, none out. The Cougs do end up with a runner on third with one out. 
That was first and second, not out for McIntyre. The fielder's choice, and now first and third. Watkins at third. McIntyre at first, and Wilk at the plate. Again, the Cougars have an excellent performance number in bringing runs home in this situation. Runner on third, less than two outs. That's the big spot for Jake Wilk. He needs it. We need it. Come through right here, Biggin. Jacobs two for ten in the series. That's a balk, yeah. One of his two hits is a home run. A balk is yep. called, and that is going to be a run brought home. The runners advance a base. That'll bring Watkins from third to home. It'll put McIntyre from first to second, and the Cougs take a 4-3 lead on a balk. On a balk, yeah. It's a, uh, and now the pressure's off of Jake, right, in that situation. But... Uh, Rob Hansen calls the Bach from second base position um, on the no pause. He, he didn't pause. You have to pause. He didn't come fully set. So it's a no pitch. And Bach. And the fourth Bach by opposing pitchers this year. And it scores a run, the go-ahead run. You're in the bottom of the fifth. BYU four and Santa Clara three. As scoring on the Bach is Brock. Watkins. So Jacob Wilk remains in the box. One out, one on. McIntyre in scoring position at second base. Jake with runners in scoring position. Not a great number, but he does have that home run power. Five dingers on the year, including one last night. That's a called strike. 0 and 1 to Jacob. Jacob today 0 for 2 with a strikeout in the first and a pop-up in the third. And that's fouled to the screen. So Hales gets ahead of Wilco and 2. One out, one on, bottom 5. BYU's gone from down 3-1 to leading 4-3. Santa Clara two in the first and uh, the second. BYU one in the third. Broncos one in the fourth. Cougs two in the fourth and now one in the fifth for the 4-3 lead. Well outside for ball one. Yeah, tries to just show a fastball outside. Catcher was even setting up way out there to see if he'd get Jake to chase. Didn't happen and the 1-2 count is the result with one out, one on for BYU. Cougs have gone in front. Can they hold the lead here at Miller Park? The one-two to Wilk, and he'll take again outside. That was even farther outside for ball two. It's a great job of reaching to get that slider running away. Yeah, Christ, uh, Christophe for for a big, sturdy guy, very nimble. He very is. Limber yeah, behind he's home a plate. really good catcher. He really is. The two-two. Well, and that's I'll, ball three. Obviously, he's a smart kid. You said he's a grad transfer from Yale, yeah. right? I feel bad for all those Ivy League kids. They didn't even get to play baseball yeah. last year. Yep. So they had the COVID year, no baseball. Last year, no baseball. And finally got to play this year. I don't blame any single yeah. one of them for transferring. Grad transfer from Yale, Christofery. We kicks out that leg and get that Tony Pena vibe yeah. from Christofery. And he kicks it out again, but a ball four is thrown in by Hales. And so one and two, or rather first and second for BYU. Off the 3-2 count, the walk is issued to Wilk. It's his first base on balls of the day. Second walk issued by Bronco pitchers today, both coming here in the fifth. And so now it's first and second for Ryan Sapiti. Sapiti's due. He's flied out to center and flied out to right in his first two at-bats today. Two for 11 in the series. Empty count, one out, two on. The Cougs have taken a 4-3 lead. Mm. That's a grounder to short, to second for one, to first, and it's a Goes wild away. throw to first. Sapiti will end up at second. Coming home to score is McIntyre. And the Cougs take a 5-3 lead. A would-be double play turns into a wild throw at first, and the Cougars score a run. Yeah, you know, he hits a routine short hopper to short, but he runs hard. And because he runs hard, he forces the throw wild. It bounces away. He slides into second, and Mitch scores easy. So McIntyre scores on the E6, and Sapiti reaches second on the E6. That was 6-4 to four to erase Wilk. 
but the 6-4-3 wasn't turned as the throw was wild to first. That would have been an E4, not an E6. And the next batter is Austin Deming, who takes outside for ball one. But the Cougars score their fifth run, 5-3. to three. The Cougs go in front. Extend the lead to two. A half check, but a hold back by Deming. Two balls, no strikes. 5-3, BYU now leads Santa Clara 2 here in the bottom of the fifth. The throwing error by the second baseman on a would-be double play ball puts Sapedi at second and brings McIntyre home with the Cougars' fifth run. That's three straight balls to, Mac uh, to Deming, 3-0. Well, that's the key point there is when you put the ball in play, right, make them have to make a play, and they couldn't execute, and you get an extra run because of it, and now you have a runner at second, chance to add on another two-out run. You have to put it balls in play. You preach ball and play, ball and pray, no strikeout to make sure that uh, they have to make the play. The 3-0, two out, one on, and that's inside a four-pitch walk to Deming. So the Broncos had not issued a, a free pass until the fifth, and here in the fifth, three bases on balls by Santa Clara pitching. And it's now first and second. Sapedi at second, Deming at first. Cowden, who had the two-run home run, the biggest hit of the day so far for BYU. That two-run shot to right. Last inning, the fourth inning, tied the game at three, and now BYU's on top five to three. And that's outside the call, strike one. 92 miles an hour from Hales. No balls and a strike. Two out for BYU, runners on first and second. Sapedi at second, Deming at first. Cowden bats on a one for two day. There's that kick out stance by Christopher. He fouled out for 0-2. Just that notion of putting balls in play. That's why the Cougar pitchers, those 29 strikeouts in the first two days. So the 54 outs BYU got, 29 yeah. were strikeouts. They only put 25 balls in play. Yeah, so only 25 opportunities, yeah. you know, which just, it's, it's huge. The 0-2, two out, two on. That's well away. Kind of a waste pitch for one and two from Hales. So Josh Cowden before that two-run home run was in a bit of a one-for-16 rut. Not a lot of reps or at-bats for Josh lately, but he certainly busted out in style and tied the game for BYU. The Cougs have now gone in front by two. And that's a backwards K, a taken strike called, and that'll do it. But for BYU, in the bottom of the fifth, two runs on one hit. There was an error, and there were two left on. We go top six. BYU 5, Santa Clara 3 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to Cougar Baseball. Alongside Tuckett Slade, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Santa Clara third baseman Matt Jew leads off the sixth inning for the Broncos. Southpaw on the hill, Cy Nielsen pipes in strike one. So a 13 on the mound and a 13 in the batter's box. Nielsen facing Jew in a 5-3 ball game. BYU off a back-to-back -back crooked number innings taking a 5-3 lead. The kick and fire, and that is striped to left field. It'll be a single to left for Jew in his first hit of the day. That's now five straight innings. Talk it that the lead batter's gotten a hit for Santa Clara. Yeah, and they, this is the definitely the best day offensively they've had on the weekend. Putting together really good swings. And, and I mean, when you come in here, you're fighting right now because you just got beat twice in a row right on the road. And you're in the, the, right in the thick of the conference. You're coming in here on Saturday. I'm not going to get swept. you got to sneak a win out of here to help with the standings. Two-run game, tying right at the plate now. Efren Manzo. All he's done today is go two for two with two solo shots. He's been the man. So, <laughs> 0 1. Yes, he has. To the DH. And that's a swinging strike. 0 and 2 for Cy. Cy Nielsen, the lefty on the mound, gets ahead of Efren Manzo. BYU's ahead of the Broncos, 5-3. Cougars trailed 3-1, so four straight for BYU to go in front. Will Colding-Jew at first. 
Cy Nielsen staring directly at first base. Now kicks and fires. And that's a grounder. Could be two. Pratt to Watkins for one in the air. The yes. throw to first for yes. two. Yes. It's a 4-6-3 DP a leaping. Brock Watkins finishing it off as he fires to first. And the base pass are empty with two gone now in the top of the six. Yeah, I didn't think it was hit hard enough for a double play, but uh, they did a great job. And Brock on the jump over the runner for the out. Nicely done. And that's BYU's second double play of the day. A 6-4-3 and now a 4-6-3. Two gone. Inside edge, nice pitch by Sai for strike one on Michael Diaz, the right fielder. Diaz singled and scored in the second. He grounded out in the fourth. Scored on the Alex Lambo RBI double. Grounder foul down the first baseline. So Sai's in a good spot ahead 0-2 on Michael Diaz. Yes, yeah, slider inside for strike one. Slider away, fouled off for strike two. Cooks have done a nice job not letting, except for those home runs, yeah. you know, leadoff hits bother them. You know, a solo shot's a solo shot, but not letting runners really advance on the base pass. That's Cy going outside edge and not catching it off 92 miles an hour. It's ball one. Yeah, close, close, close. Great 0-2 pitch. The one-two. And that's a nice swing shot. and strikeout. The whiff of Diaz. And that'll do it for Santa Clara in the top of the sixth. For the Broncos, no runs, one hit, no errors, no one left on. We go bottom six. Cougs lead 5-3 on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU looking to hand Santa Clara a third straight loss for a first time this season. We're bottom six, 5-3 Cougs lead. Colin Reuter leads off the sixth for BYU and laces that down the line into the left field corner. That will be a double for Colin Reuter. One pitch, one swing, and one hit to lead off the sixth for BYU. Reuter's at second. And what do you say in the seven games now he's had... How many hits every game? <laughs> one hit every game. <laughs> it's okay if he wants to get one more today, yeah, but he's yeah. now hit his quota. Uh, I do like the double, though. He, I mean, he's pretty much 50-50 on 50% of his balls in play or extra base hits. Three for eight now on the series and four total bases for Colin Reuter. He's at second leadoff double for Dawson Hall, the number nine hitter. Top of the order due up. Dawson squares and pulls back. An appeal at third. Nope. It'll be ball one. 1-0 one to Dawson Hall. A strikeout in the third. A flyout in the fourth. BYU looks to maintain momentum. Big sixth inning here. You've scored four in a row. Can you expand the lead on well, this Santa Clara team that has dropped the first two of this series? The 1-0 to Hall. Squares pulls back again and again. Ball two. So Colin Reuter with that double extends his hit streak to seven games. With his tuck it noted, a hit in every one of those games. One hit, exactly one. 2-0. Kick and fire, and that's fouled to the screen by Hall. One, uh, two balls and a strike. Skylar Hales is the second pitcher for Santa Clara. BYU's gone from Jansen Kiesel to Cy Nielsen. Both teams using two on the hill. BYU two-run lead and a 2-1 count facing Dawson Hall. The glance back to second. Mm, and oh, Hales comes plateward and punches him in for strike two. That's too good of a pitch there to take. Be all on time, that one. The impassioned pleadings of Tuckett Slade <laughs> alongside today. The 2-2. Two -two. And that is a taken third strike. Dawson Hall slams the knob of the bat on the turf as he walks back to the dugout. So a backwards K and one gone. Still one on. Still a runner in scoring position. But the Cougs don't advance the runner after a leadoff double by Colin Reuter. Two-run lead, leadoff double. You think about that St. Mary's situation late in the game. Want to move that guy across and... There, Colin Reuter sits, looking for more breathing room. Insurance runs against Santa Clara. Called strike on the top of the order hitter, Brock Watkins. Brock 
an RBI or a double, a double in the fifth, and he came around to score. Scored on a Bach eventually. He did. And that's fouled by Watkins. So and two to Brock. So Colin Ruder leadoff double. He's at second here in the bottom of the sixth. It's one out and a two-run lead for BYU 5-3. Big hit of the day, a two-run Josh Cowden home run, game-tying home run in the fourth. The 0-2, Brock will take low ball, rolls away from the catcher. Now it'll be third base in the sacrifice in play now, at least sacrifice fly in play now for Brock Watkins as advancing on the pass ball is Colin Ruder to third. I think that, I think wild? that's... Uh, well, they say Wilder no, pass. I think that's the first pass ball of the oh. weekend, too, for yeah. Santa Clara. Well, infield's playing in now. One and two count. Brock just put a ball in play here and, and, and get that run. It's all about ball in play. One ball, two strikes. Time is granted. Rusty's just checking to make sure that uh, his catcher's wrist is okay. Kind of got crossed up there. It's a slow grounder to third, retreating. And then the high throw to first. It'll be safe at first for Watkins. So retreating to third was Ruder, but the throw from third was high and took Hanley off the bag. And the Cougs have a somewhat fortunate first and third with one out. Yeah, high chopper. Third baseman has to come in hard and make a tough play. And even if it's online, I think, yeah, Brock's going to beat that. Hmm. So it might have been an infield yeah, single infield regardless. Single, yeah, it's close enough that, yeah, because he's right there. So we'll call it an infield single for Watkins on the high throw to first. Well, Ozzie, great time here to pick up an RBI. It's going to be hard to double Ozzie off because the way that he runs. Ruder at third, Watkins at first, and Ozzie Pratt lifts it into foul territory into the BYU bullpen. One out, two on, two run lead for BYU. Brock Watkins on the grounder to third. Jew handled cleanly, but then threw high to Hanley, took him off the bag. And they called a single as the hit may have beaten it even with a good throw. 0-1. Back-to-back hits for Watkins, by the way. Two-hit day for Brock. The 0-1. High for ball one. One ball, one strike. Cougars looking for breathing room. 5-3 Cougs, 5 runs, 9 hits for BYU, 3 runs, 8 hits for Santa Clara. Ozzie Pratt, single, single, base on balls. 2 for 2 officially today. Skyler Hales on the hill. Ooh. He goes off speed for a strike. Yeah, that ball's up and away. Good take there by Ozzie. Hales 77 mile per hour strike by Hales. One ball, two strikes to Ozzie. If he throws that again, Ozzie, just flip it into left. Pratt 6 for 10 in the series. Runner in scoring position. Ozzie 333 with runners in scoring position. High and away ball two, the count even. Ozzie worked himself into a walk in his last at bat. Nice little rollover in the four hole right here. Plenty of room there, and he'll go opposite and foul it out of play. Down the third base line, and two and two, the count stays. Mitch McIntyre on deck. An RBI double highlighting Mitch's day. The 2-2 to Pratt. It's a great foul again. Two and two to Ozzie, who's on a six-game hit streak now. He's BYU's batting average leader. 
346 coming into the day, and now up to 370 after two hits today. And that is hit sharply to right. It'll get down in right field. One run will score. Right fielder falls down, gets back up with it. It'll be first and second. But run number six crosses the plate. It's an RBI single to right for Ozzie Pratt. Three hits on the day. Uh, He's now 7 for 11 in the series. The machine right now. Good for you, Ozzie Pratt. 7 for 11. That is unbelievable. RBI for Ozzie, his second of the series. And BYU's now gone from down 3-1 to leading 6-3 in first and second. One out. Runner in scoring position for Mitch McIntyre. Mitch doubled a run home in the third. Reached on a 4-6 fielder's choice in the fifth and scored on a throwing error. 1-0 to McIntyre. Two on for BYU. One out. A three-run lead now for BYU. Strike one delivered to McIntyre. Evens the count. One and one. Arms up in the Santa Clara bullpen. BYU leading by three after trailing by two. Six runs, ten hits. Another double-digit hit day for BYU. Bats warming up with the weather. The 1-1. Christopher sets his target. A grounder to second. To second base for one to the shortstop. Gets the first. There won't be a second out on the play. So Pratt is a race going first to second. Watkins is now at third. And reaching on the fielder's choice is McIntyre for a second time today. Another 4-6 fielder's choice. That's exactly what happened his last at bat. Yep. Two out RBI out there, Jake. No pressure on you. All the pressure is on the pitcher right here because of the situation. Down three here, and their offense only has nine outs to go. Jacob Wilk takes ball one. With the runners on first and third. Watkins at third, McIntyre at first. BYU with runs in four consecutive innings now. One in the third, two in the fourth, two in the fifth, one in the sixth, leading 6-3. It's outside and low, but called strike one. One and one, two out, two on. Jake's a, two, a 353 2 two-out hitter. a mighty swing, but swings through strike two. One ball, two strikes to Wilk. Strike out, a pop up, and a base on balls, and a check swing, they call it. So the strikeout of Wilk ends the inning. BYU in the bottom of the sixth scores one run on two hits. There were no errors. And there were two runners left on. We go top seven. BYU six, Santa Clara three on the new skin. BYU Sports Network.